It's the age-old question. Which console is better, the Sega Genesis or the Super Nintendo? Which console deserves to be called the king of the classics? My name's Jer, and welcome to Clashbacks. First off, a little history lesson. In the late 80s, the video game renaissance was in full swing, and at the forefront was Nintendo's NES console. After the infamous video game crash in 1983, it fell to Nintendo to take up the mantle of the NES, and they succeeded tenfold. For a long time, Nintendo was dominating the market with instant classics such as Super Mario Bros., Legend of Zelda, Metroid, Punch-Out!, Mega Man, Castlevania, and so much more. With so many memorable classics, it seemed the NES would continue to stay at the top leading into the early 90s, right? <laughs> Wrong. In 1988, or 1989 for North America, the NES met its match in the form of Sega Genesis by, of course, Sega. This new console was an immediate game changer to the console market, supporting 16-bit graphics as opposed to the NES's 8-bits. It was easy to see that the NES was outclassed. So, Nintendo retaliated by releasing the Super Nintendo in 91, or 92 for us Yanks. With these two goliaths in the same market, the war that we all know and love officially began. If you're unfamiliar with the way this show rolls, the way that this is going to go is I'm going to judge these two consoles on five categories. Appearance, technology, add-ons, games, and lasting impact. With that said, let's start with appearance. First, let's check out the Super Nintendo. While it's certainly a step up from the NES in terms of appearance, it does have its faults. For one, it's smaller than the NES, and the purple power buttons stand out from the gray shell, but that's about it. It's not really anything to write home about. The controller was kind of weird as well. It's a little on the small side when comparing to the controllers, and it feels strangely light. I feel like if I accidentally drop it, it would shatter into a million pieces. Now I know this controller was mainly for children, and as you can see, I'm not really a child, but it is kind of hard to play games with this controller with my mammoth hands. Now, we move on to the Genesis controller. Immediately, it stands out with its sleek black exterior and multiple add-ons. I really like how this thing looks, and I especially like how they put the 16-bit and bold letters on there. Kinda like a big up yours in Nintendo. I also like the controller. Sure, the six-face button ordeal is an oddity, and the D-pad is kinda bad, but I can get used to it after a while. The controller feels very natural in my hands, and it even has a secondary function. You can plug a Genesis controller into an Atari 2600, and it plays fine. Sega has this category down pat. Point goes to Sega. Now, in terms of comparison with the Genesis and the SNES, the SNES is superior to the Genesis in most of the main areas such as its color palette, sprite size, amount of RAM, and a few other things. The only area it falls short in is the processor, which Sega far outclassed them with. Due to this processor, Sega was inspired to make the marketing term Blast Processing. This famous line would be used to further sell the Genesis via many, many, many amazing commercials. You'd be hard pressed to find a commercial advertising the Genesis where they didn't use the term. However, Nintendo had an ace in their proverbial hole. They introduced the world to the Super FX chip, which allowed for some 3DS graphics. It mostly consisted of basic polygons, but some were even as advanced as wireframes. The biggest example of the FX chip had to be Star Fox, a game in which you pilot a polygonal ship through space while fighting other polygonal shapes. Now, this may sound dull, but back then, this was revolutionary for games. Other notable games that took advantage of the chip were Mega Man X2 and 3, Super Mario RPG, Kirby Superstar, and much more. Also introduced with the SNES is Mode 7, which allows the background of certain games to be changed and moved while the foreground stays the same to add in a 3D effect. This allowed games like Final Fantasy to appear much larger in scale compared to other games. The sound quality was a lot different between the two systems. The Genesis had a noticeable twang to it. This was due to its <coughs> Yamaha YM2612 sound chip. Some notable examples include Mega Man The Wily Wars and Echo the Dolphin. The SNES soundtrack was a different story. Because it had more sound room, the game's soundtracks were drastically different than each other. Super Mario World sounded cheery and harmless, while Star Fox and F-Zero pumped you up for some action. Super Metroid gave you a sense of fear and terror, while Mega Man X let you rock out with its headbanging soundtrack. Because the Genesis was released nearly two years before the SNES in North America, it had some obsolete hardware compared to the newer SNES. It's safe to say that while Genesis had some good technical aspects, it just didn't compare to Nintendo's creation. Point goes to Nintendo. The most memorable add-on for the SNES has to be the Super Game Boy. This device allowed people to play Game Boy games on the big screen. This was very much needed since it was hard to see games on that gray brick. Genesis, however, followed the time-honored tradition of quantity over quality. They introduced the Sega CD in 91 and the 32X in 94. These two add-ons allowed for even more games to be played on the Genesis. The CD allowed for games to have FMV, or full motion video for those who don't understand professional acronyms such as myself. The results were... unique, at least. 
32X was a different story, being one of the very first game add-ons to have 3D games like Virtua Fighter. Nintendo had some add-ons like the Super Scope and the Mario Paint mounts, but those were only for specific games and were partially useless if you didn't even own the game that supported it. Nintendo tried their best, but Sega takes the point on this category, even if those Sega add-ons were dodgy at best. The point goes to Genesis. Okay, real talk. I'm gonna open this category by saying this. If you didn't think Nintendo got this point by an absolute landslide, well, then you aren't very smart now, are you? Mario World, Star Fox, Super Castlevania, F Zero, Super Metroid, A Link to the Past, Donkey Kong Country, Kirby Superstar, Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy, the list goes on and on and on and on. Other than Sonic, Streets of Rage, Gunstar Heroes, and Echo the Dolphin, there aren't many notable Genesis games that were memorable. The Genesis is the console that I like to call the hidden gem console. Some notable examples include Aladdin, Earthworm Jim, Toe Jam and Earl, and much more. The Genesis was for people that wanted to have a faster time, and as such, beat em ups and racing games were very plentiful. Heck, the mascot of Sega was all about speed, not the drug, but let's be honest, that's probably what made Sonic. The SNES had a great collection of RPGs. The main three that came out all around the same time were Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy III, which is actually six, but I'll get into that later, and Secret of Mana. And no one could forget the wackiness of Earthbound, even if they tried. That's not to say Nintendo didn't have racing games and beat em ups. Final Fight and Super Mario Kart are still talked about to this very day. Sega also dabbled in the RPG scene with Fantasy Star and Shining Force, though those aren't as well known. There were even games that were on both consoles like Mortal Kombat, which look and sound drastically different depending on the version you play. While Sega had some diamonds in the rough, they can't really compare to Nintendo's massive treasure trove of classics. Sometimes solely relying on a blue hedgehog could prove dangerous in the future. Point goes to Nintendo. It's all tied up now, so let's move on to our final category, Lasting Impact. As I've hopefully proved with this video, both consoles have stood the test of time and have produced many great A games that still hold up to this day. However, the question still remains, which console is superior? In my honest opinion, the Super Nintendo is the better console for a multitude of reasons. For starters, the console's tech is vastly superior to the Genesis, but most importantly, many of Nintendo's main games that I've mentioned are still being played and talked about to this very day thanks to Nintendo's virtual console. The Genesis wasn't as lucky, unfortunately due to Sega's no longer making consoles since the failure of the Dreamcast. While they have grouped up most of their best games in various collections over the years similar to the Atari, they just don't measure up to Nintendo. If Sega were still making consoles, there likely would have been a system like the Virtual Console, and people would be talking about how great Aladdin or Earthworm Jim is. But remember, Nintendo had amazing classics. While aside from Sonic and a handful of hidden gems, Sega's lineup of games simply couldn't match up. Sega tried their hardest, but the definitive winner, and the true king of the classics, is Nintendo. Hopefully I made some sense. If you have any suggestions for future Clashback episodes, please leave them down in the comments. Or, you know, yell at me on Twitter. Whatever comes first. 